Hello, everyone. Welcome to our R&D Streams MTG. I'm Melissa DeTore here with Paul Chion. Hello. We're going to play some standard today on my account with these sweet quests. Oh, you guys can't see my sweet quests yet. Oh, but... we, can, we can't. So I've already done my quests because uh, I have this thing where every season I need to hit Mythic. So I play a ton, and then I usually stop once I hit Mythic. So we're on Melissa's account because she has a lot of, uh, a lot of gold coins to accumulate. Uh, and I never up. hit Mythic. Well, you you've also you, that, you did you accomplished one of them, right? Because right? um, usually doesn't it kill yeah, with three? Um, I played two days ago. Is what, oh, you played is what two days ago. Okay, so anyways, okay. we're gonna show you now the decks that we're gonna be working with. So we're actually gonna be swapping accounts back and forth because we just want to show you a variety of decks. And between the two of us, we have a bunch of decks. But you know, uh, I don't have some other cards that she has, and she doesn't have some of the cards I have. So, so our first deck is green white tokens. It's just a pretty standard green-white token. With Hwatli! I've Hwatli. never seen this card played before. Oh, I've played a ton of it. FFL? Yeah, oh, definitely, yeah. <laughs> like, a deck actually, like, very much like this, too. Um, Fair enough. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah. It, uh, uh, don't mind the three March of the Multitudes. We're just uh, trying something out here. As in, uh, we just didn't have the fourth one. But, it's okay. We're going to be playing this and try to hit our quests. And currently, the reason why we're playing this deck is because it says... Our, qu our quests are attack with 45 creatures and cast 30 white blue spells. That helps out a lot. Also, we think the deck is really sweet. So, we're, you know, we're not just going to be playing like white weenie or whatever. The deck because... is sweet. You can just go off with Hawatli. It's super fun. Like, I played probably more Hawatli than most people yeah. on the planet. Hawatli <laughs> plus March is really awesome. Yeah. And um, also, even like a kicked Sapperling Migration, you just draw four cards or whatever. So. Yeah, I was playing a token deck, but it didn't have March because there was no Guilds of Ravnica yet, so it had, like, the Legion's Landing. Mm, um, mm. History of Benalia. Yeah, it had History of Benalia, of course. Yeah, but I feel like... I, I played Jade Light Ranger. Yeah, I mean, Jade Light Ranger is just a good card. Too bad there's no Skull Clamp in Standard. Uh, I think that's gonna... I'm gonna go with... That's probably a good thing. I think Skull Clamp in Standard... Whew, any Standard environment would be uh, slightly too strong. All right, so let's go hop into queue here. Wait, actually, hold on. Because it's best of one, do we need to adjust the, the lands in this deck? Um, like, do we need oh, to cut a land? Oh, maybe. I think you're supposed to. Oh, yeah, maybe. Uh, but what can we add to the deck? I think you can add a Loxodon. I already added a Loxodon for the March. Should right. there be four of them? Well, or should there, I mean, there, there be more cheaper things? It could be a Legion's Landing, but we don't have a rare. Mm -hmm. So we have to think of commons and uncommons. <laughs> That we could play instead of a land because twenty one plus four flower flourish is a lot. Why yeah. cut lands? Um, well, so for best of one, arena has a hand smoothing mechanic, uh, just kind of built into it. And on top of that, it, it so it makes sure it, it gives you the best land to spell ratio of two hands. It just gives you better opening hands. Right, for, it does. For best of one. But it doesn't account for the fact that flower flourish is a mana, is a land basically. Yes. So it's even more likely for you to be flooded in this deck because. Yep. Uh, you might just have a hand with three lands plus flower flourish. Oh, it's three hands now? It's three hands now? Dang, okay. I didn't know that. I mean, we can just play... Do you have another, like, Amara or something? I or... do have another Amara. Do you think that's fine? I don't know. Like, it could be other... It, it could be a uh, Thorn a Lieutenant? Two drops? A Dante it... Vanguard? Oh, yeah, sure. Snubhorn um, Sentry? Uh... Yeah, I definitely like it being a, a, a two drop. I guess it could be a one drop, too. You can go for a Thorn Lieutenant. Yeah, I like that. Sure. All right. Boom. It's going to be good. Oh, wait. I need to actually cut a land. Let's oh, cut okay. Uh, a point. Um, Law Monarch in the chat said, uh, like, normal play is three hands, ranked is two hands, which that makes sense because it's a little bit more, more competitive. Okay. Let's do it. Let's. You want to play ranked? Yeah, yeah let's, play let's ranked. do it. Let's play ranked. Green. Oops. I am not. I am not doing a good job here. Sorry, folks. It's because I'm on Melissa's we, account. I'm very uncomfortable on her this. account. Okay, here we go. Ranked. Let's go. All right. Watsy spoiler time. We are not, uh, we don't currently have no cards uh, looking. We're not looking to preview anything right now, I don't think. Uh, but they if they do give us cards to preview. Modern Horizons Yeah, if they want, if there are, if it is time, they will give us cards. Or we can even maybe reach out and ask to preview yeah, a few cards. Yeah, you know, like, we don't really uh, plan who gets what for preview cards. Um, we just kind of sit here and sometimes uh, someone who whose job it is to, oh, this is to give bad preview matchup. cards like, hey, you get a preview card. This oh, this looks like a pretty bad matchup, yeah. We don't have anything. Oh, you, you know what it should have been? It should have been one Crawler Harpooner. You're right. Yes. yes, best of one. Oh, no. Not like this. 
Not like this. Yeah, uh, we're pretty dead. Or it could have just been a removal spell. It could have been like one baffling end, right? Yeah, we do have... Would We probably have a couple of Conclave Tribunals. I didn't really I think look. it's got four. Well, our opponent can't do anything here. So we're also here to answer your questions about... Of course. ...pretty much anything like design, competitive, constructed, most right. things. But what we can't do is answer questions about things that are happening in the future. So I can't mm -hmm. answer the question uh, about the Planeswalkers that would just ask, like... <laughs> right. Like, all we can really say is, like, kind of like what was already said. Like, yes, it was confirmed that there will be 36 Planeswalkers in War of the Spark and one per pack. But that's all we can really say about it. So our opponent can spell pierce it, but they cannot... Dang. They cannot Wizards retort it because we have a Tithe Taker in play. It's the reason why I played this before attacking, because I don't want my opponent to trade and then have Wizards retort up. But yes, like, you know, Melissa and I, we will often switch who plays. Uh, I was I was saying how Melissa is very good at interacting with the chat, whereas I like focusing on gameplay a lot. So, you know, it, I feel like we have much more productive chats when Melissa is actually navigating the chat. Yeah, I have a really hard time doing two things at once, so I can't really play and then read the questions. Right. But on the other hand, like, Paul can, like, only do two things at once, so so he's, like, <laughs> watching me play the game and kind of looking at the chat. Well, I will say, <laughs> like, you know, this is something that I did for a living, which definitely helps. Um, but uh, I I'm also feeling the rust, for sure. Yeah. I'm, like, not, I'm not a double cure, okay? Just so you know, I'm not a double cure. Uh, that that's that, that's not my thing. I can never I can never do the double Q thing back when people that was a thing to do on Magic Online. Also now with Arena, you don't really ever need to double Q because it's I just mono action. I don't understand how we can possibly win this game. Like this game just looks so over to me. Well, I just wanted to attack with my creatures to get get our goal going. You know, but it's okay. So crawl. That's fair. That's fair. So this is this is what we do. This is this happens all the time you lose and then you tilt change a card to beat the deck you just lost to and then it's what everybody does and then after that happens you play against like the worst possible deck in which that uh <laughs> like card is relevant so now we're going to play against esper control because we added crawl harpooner to be fair like this isn't the worst in i mean it's a two mana three two reach creature it's not that bad so all right here's a question should we add another crawl harpooner like mono blue is really popular in best of one we can we just should, cut we this cut a loxodon yeah Yep. Alright. I like it. It also looks less random when there's two and not just one. Definitely. <laughs> like why like one of like a weird like planeswalker or a weird like expensive card makes right, sense. Right, but not one like a random a, two of drop. Of a two drop, that yeah. doesn't make any sense. Can you confirm or deny whether Mountain will be reprinted in war? I, there were probably I'm not I'm not actually sure. I does every set get basic lands? Yeah. Okay. Well, then it's probably happening. So yeah. I don't actually, I don't pay attention to that stuff because we don't need to test the power level of basic land. Yeah, even in a set like one of the Ravnica's where we had guild gates in the basic land slot, there were still basic lands in the set. They were just okay. in other products like probably the deck builder's toolkit, stuff like that. Melissa, do you miss playing magic at a competitive level? Sometimes I do. What, what are the times where you're like, man, is it like when you're watching coverage? Uh, or? It's usually like when I'm actually at the GP. Mm -hmm. So I'm at the GP and I'm just like watching a feature match table or like just watching a match or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, yeah, I, I do kind of <laughs> miss this. Oh no, the draw! Man, we are losing to everything. See, Crawl Harpooner isn't even good again. Well, I guess it is well, actually very good against the Healer's Hawk. Right? It would be good against the Healer's Hawk, but they would gain the life. And this would be a 4-4. Wow, look at all these flower flourishes. I know. That feels pretty bad. All, all I'm saying is so far, the Whatleys are the ones that's looked pretty embarrassing in the, mm -hmm. the two decks we played against so far. Like, uh, uh, linear aggressive strategies, this is at its worst. What, what I think is actually... Oh my god. That's the biggest Pride Mate ever. So we, we, need just, tribunal. we need a tribunal. Yeah. Is this where we cut some cards for Baffling End? And then we play against Esper Control? Well, you, my, my thing is, in Best of One, I think you, see, you play against... Like more polarizing decks, you don't play against mid ranges as much, and you play much more against like streamlined aggro or Esper control. Yep. So in, in that world, I mean, like, I guess Wally is fine against control, but uh, it's okay. I'm, should I chump here? Oh, I guess we, I guess we could chump with a a token, but I don't really. We can wait a turn. 
Yeah, sure. Because yeah. okay. this can trade with a Leon and Vanguard. All right, but anyways, Tribunal, please. Nope. Nope. Mm, I think we're dead again. So we're we just gonna. It's okay. Hold on. Power three times. Oh, I have to cast my white spells. <laughs> <laughs> Look, boom, Melissa, I just cast three white spells. Thank so. you. We're getting there. We're getting there. Now what? <laughs> Chump, maybe? So this is one thing I never understood about the tokens deck. It plays three legions landing, and your deck is trying to convoke out a bunch of things. Why does it have so few one drops? Look at how the white weenie decks are built. They're, they're, they're playing yeah. 18 one drops, and this deck only plays three. I just, I feel like something went wrong there. Like... There, this deck just probably needs to have more cheap things to do. It just feels so clunky. But leave out Putrefy? We did make a Putrefy. It's called Assassin's Trophy. That's yep. a good one. Also, Vraska. I mean, I feel like Golgari actually is doing fine in terms of good removal effects, right? You have Vraska. You have four mana Vraska, six mana Vraska, Assassin's Trophy... Uh, yeah, green black is good at dealing green black with uh, plenty of removal. different permanents. Yeah, yeah. Also, uh, Mythos Fall makes a good point. Um, I forgot Putrefy does say it can't be regenerated, and we just don't put that on. Oh, cards sure. Anymore. We could make like basically Putrefy, but it would be a different card name that wouldn't sh have the right. It, can't like, be regenerated. Like a, a sort of functional reprint. Oh, uh, we're just dead. All right. All right. I'm gonna revamp this deck real quick. We could play a Johnny. He's so motivational. <laughs> uh, All he does is he wants you to do well. Yeah, there's no way we can fit blue for like detention major or anything, right? The mana would just be too bad, probably. Hmm. Blue, green, blue, white. So you can play four blue, green, and four blue, white lands. You would probably play less flower flourish because you have more non-basics and yeah you just probably want those slots for other things yeah i just love me a detention mage it's a removal spell but it's also a creature to convoke but the johnny goes back you know what we'll just we'll just here look we'll just get we'll keep it real spicy you never want to draw more than one cut a tristani no it's, uh, i think it's fine I, I think you know what we just need to go first and we'll be fine like unbreakable formation also looks weird to me because you don't play that many creatures i mean what are some of the other ones? Like Llanowar Elf is an option, but Llanowar Elf into History of Benali is not really a thing. Unless you get Temple and Garden as, as a draw. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I was playing Llanowar Elves in my Hawatli deck, actually. Yeah, I mean, if you're... Yep. Look, like, Llanowar Elves is certainly super strong, but like, look at all these hands. These hands are always just the worst. I'm going to mulligan this. Yeah, you know, I was watching someone stream this deck, and it looked just not good. Like, it yep. was just clunky. Like, Legion's Landing never flipped because you didn't have enough tokens. Right. It was just... Just a weird deck, I think. For just just so you know, the, my bread and butter the last two seasons has just been the white weenie deck. It's been uh, extremely strong. I'm gonna play this because I want to flip that. Selesnya Angels, yeah, Selesnya Angels. I've been pretty impressed with. That's oh yeah, I actually good. have that deck built too. We can switch over to that. That deck might just be stronger. Yep. Chump attack! Everybody loves... Look, everybody's chump attacked. At least once in their life. Oh, definitely. Sometimes <laughs> it even wins you the game. Right. I mean, to be fair, trading a token to get a land there, big game. Yeah, we get yeah. Tristani next turn now. White Weenie is great. For I would actually say Super Tilt that White Weenie, I think it's actually... I, I like it more in best of three. So the only reason why I say that is you would think people have good cyborgs for White Weenie after cyborg, which is true. But it's a metagame thing. There's a lot more mono red in best of one than there is in best of three. And mono red is one of White Weenie's worst matchups. And so I noticed that I play, fight, play against a lot less mono red when I play in best of three. Uh, do we just Tristani? Yeah, I think we Tristani. We can't even attack, though. No, but we can soon, eventually. Yeah, I'm wondering if we just play this then instead. Oh, and then the following turn we yeah, can and then, and then Tristani, Tristani, and, and then, next then the turn. turn after attack with tokens yeah. that are bigger. 
All right, I'll, I'll just do it. I know it's like less, it's not as man efficient, but I think this might be for it. Is Selesnia your favorite guild, Melissa? It is not. My favorite guild is Simic. Yeah. We have a Simic deck. I built the Merfolk deck. I played it in some best of one. It's pretty sweet. It's a pretty sweet deck. It's kind of like you're building this house of cards, though. You're like, please do kill my two mana Merfolk. Because if you do, everything crumbles. What's green for in the Angels deck? Green is for the Explore package. So the Angels deck is more like a life gain deck. Mm -hmm. It's trying to trigger Resplendent Angel. And it's doing that by playing like Wild Growth Walker and J Light Ranger to gain a bunch of life and make angels. All right. I'm okay with this. Our opponent is why Legion they, War Boss. Why did they attack? Wait, should they have attacked with their spellbreaker? No, like, did we have not. a did we have a profitable double block? We didn't have, but I mean, now we have an anthem in play, so. Yep. <laughs> All right, we might we might get this one. Um. We yes, War of the Spark will have a planeswalker in each pack. That has been confirmed. Yeah. Ooh, there's a lava coil. It's okay. We we, we got we got a good value hit in, and then we got a Johnny next turn. Oh yeah, we are firmly in the driver's seat now. Oh, and we have a Johnny? I know. Oh man. I'm wondering if a Johnny would have been better or worse than Watley. Who designed L U T S? What is that? I don't know. Alright, so do we have a lethal attack? Three attack, three blockers for our three biggest creatures. Okay, our opponent conceded. Did you see that switcheroo? I know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thinking. I like to attribute all of the success to that swap to a Johnny. Mm -hmm. Yep. I think the one, the most important card that we're missing is the fourth March of the Multitudes. <laughs> I feel like this entire deck was built around March of the Multitudes. Mm -hmm. But what? But if, Melissa what, like, did what build one. Just so you know, for the stream, she did. She did make a March of the Multitude. I did. I, I used my last Mythic Wild card. She even built like she even did. She bought packs to get the Mythic Wild card. So I'm just saying, you know, the show must go on. Uh, Arena, it has not been confirmed about the Planeswalker thing. Um, we don't work on Arena, so we don't really know the answers to those types of questions. Gruel Gilgate. So all I can really say is it has not been confirmed. <laughs> you wanted to play Angel? Oh yeah, yeah, we'll play Angels after. Sorry, I forgot. Yeah, sure, we can try yeah, yeah. the Angel deck. I think it's just a little more fun, too. Like, this deck is, uh, it does one thing. It puts a bunch of tokens in play and mm -hmm. goes super wide. The Angel's deck is, like, you know, just a little more interesting. Ooh, we got the tech. How does R&D not just get arena cards? Yeah, we just, we don't. I, I, yeah. I don't know how to answer that. We just don't get arena cards. We just yeah. have our own accounts. I, you know what? Honestly, personally, I like the grind. You know, I like having to build up my account from the you know I got I bought the 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 intro 499 499 bundle yep, at the beginning yep. I bought that and then nothing else afterwards and I'm you know very happy happy with it so Yeah uh same same yeah, here yeah. I I paid for that 499 thing and yeah. then just uh just mostly did drafts like I think drafting is the best way to get constructed cards Oh absolutely Like w once ranked came out it kind of ruined my collection cuz now <laughs> like I'm incentivized only to ranked Oh yeah uh, uh, and so then like you know, you don't actually acquire anything. So, like, I play like, right. like, yeah, like, like, rank limited is for the way I would do it. But right now, I haven't been playing rank limited because it's like a different format. So, like, I have, I have it still randomly played RNA uh, limited just because it's a lot of fun. But I, I am somebody personally who I like to climb the ladder. So, you know, like, I'm very competitive. So whatever it is that I'm doing, I like to climb the ladder. So I've, I've really been focusing a lot on uh, climbing Constructed Ranked. What's the point of this Monday stream if it's not to spew off wild cards? That's when I use the most of my wild cards. The mm -hmm. Monday stream is like, all right, what deck am I building? All right, use all these wild cards. Will the war story take place in the multiverse? It takes place on Ravnica. Should we take a look at this deck just to make sure that we're not sure. missing anything new? Um, I oh I saw somebody play like two Ixali's Diviner. For bus oh, the O three. Yeah. Like as a counter whenever you explore. Yeah. Or, well, or no, that's that's yeah. just that's just another ETB explore. It's just another explore card. Okay. For Wild Growth Walker. 
I worked for Riot years ago. We got loaded personal. I, th I think it's different when you play. Yeah, I, I think that system is, is different, though. But, like, I, I you know, uh, I personally, I've just enjoyed this grind. Yeah, um, and so. we're still in beta. Maybe we will get accounts yeah, 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 someday, yeah. but uh, we have Magic Online accounts. But, like, the accounts that we use for Magic Online are mostly just to, like, keep in touch with the standard right. metagame and and keep in mind we and, do and stay good at magic we do have an r&d we did stream before on the r&d account we have an r&d account yeah we we but, do actually have an account yeah, but yeah. we also have our own account yeah exactly so whatever let's just play this There's sure a lot let's, of let's play lot of this and then uh, maybe after a few games we just switch over to merfolk yep the only issue is this has less white cards. Oh, hold Don't on. play Diviner. Jim Davis added that because he was tilted off by running into so much mono red. Nice. Fair enough. Yeah, um, I'm also surprised to adjusted uh, a dusted Ewok that Lee allows us to play a green white life gain deck on the stream. <laughs> <laughs> For those who don't know, Lee is. Like the he, mono red he guy loves mono red. He's the mono red guy and hates everything else. Yep. This is so awkward. So this deck specifically plays guild gates. So does that mean I need to? Never mind. I was wondering if I'm supposed to like not play my land and play the branch walker in case I hit guild gate. Oh wow, we just hit both of our guild gates. Oh wow. Okay. Hmm. Mm -hmm. But you know what I'm saying. If I didn't draw jade light, maybe it would have been correct not to play and miss out one point of damage. Ooh, that's a pretty good target for Knight of Autumn. Oh yeah. That's why we play Knight of Autumn. Yep. To kill. That's why we created to kill Knight of Search Autumn. For Ascanta. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> One of our reasons for making Knight of Autumn was to have a main deck card that can kill a Search for Ascanta. Yeah, just powerful moto cards in general. I think I don't want to put more onto the board here against Esper Control. What do you think? Um, just attack for five yeah, and play a tap land. Uh, yeah, I don't really see a reason to play anything else. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I think you're right. If. Yeah, like, force him to Wrath, and then we can play uh, Vivian, hopefully. Yeah, but, but I'm going to play... So I'm going to get the land here, because I haven't yeah. played a land this turn. That way we can play the Vivian post-Wrath. Yeah, definitely, yep. Yeah. Sounds great. And then if they play a removal spell, then I can play a creature. That, that's a big giveaway when you play against these control decks, when they use a, a removal spell before turn four uh, to kill one of your creatures. That is usually a big sign for me that they often don't have a Wrath. Um... That's not always the case, but generally that, that that's what I've seen happen. And here comes the wrath. And what was it like testing balancing limited with planeswalkers in every pack? It was a challenge. It was definitely a challenge. We started like very early. Like even I think before you got here, uh me and Pete Ingram started doing war planeswalker stuff. Okay. Like very early, like when the set was still in vision design. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you were here for that. Uh, no, I was not. Oh, uh, use this. We have a Vivian. We did it for two turns. I'm gonna get a land. Um, the new modern set was developed by the R and D team or someone else. It was uh, developed by mostly play design people. Um, I'll allow it. I believe, like, for vision design, the leads were Mark Globus and Ethan Fleischer. And then uh, the modern FFL was uh, mostly play design, who basically just, like, took a year off from working on standard and just worked on this modern product. It was uh, yep. Michael Majors, Adam Prozac, Tom Ross, and Dan Musser. Don't care. Although Ixalan's binding on Teferi is nice. But yeah. the Esper deck has Mortify. Yep. It's not uh, the end yeah, all be all that it used to be. It's not super nice. It's yeah, yeah. it's pretty bad actually. Okay, you're right. You're right. Well, um, let's take this one. How close were you from banning Nexus of Fate? I would say we were pretty far. Um, there's a big explanation of why Nexus of Fate wasn't banned in the banned and restricted article that went up today, so I suggest uh, reading that if you want to find out more about it, but um, the very brief explanation is it's not overpowered, it doesn't have a, a, a large share of the metagame, that's pretty much 
the reason, but we go into more detail in the article. All right. Oh, it's emblem time. It's emblem time, folks. Emblem time. We got there. We didn't even get an emblem. Well, There's no our emblem. Scoop. We just won before that happened. You know what's really sweet? when you uh, A Johnny emblem. The make three cancer turn. Mm -hmm. That's real nice. City of Angels, let's go. Ajani's so funny. He's like, he, he's just so happy that, like, that you're doing well. He's like, yeah. I'm so proud that you've come so far. Here's more cats. <laughs> Good job, Ajani. So motivational. <laughs> he is a mentor. Also, we won a game, I saw. Yeah. We did, we did. yeah. Wasn't yeah, that yeah, our yeah. first game? I'm just autopiloting, so I'm just ready to talk. Uh, I've, I've, I've played this a good amount. This is Actually, this is the first deck that Donald and I both used to hit Mythic, was yeah. the Green White Angels deck, uh, back in Best of One. Um, and then we did a stream one time where we played this deck for like pretty much the whole stream. Oh, yeah, we won like a ton of matches. Yeah, we won a ton, yeah. yeah. Whoa! Did not expect the Oligarch. Not gonna lie. <laughs> Two, two land. Wholesome cat man. That's a Johnny. A Johnny was good. Yeah. Our opponent just scooped. What just happened? God, climbing ranked is so easy. But we're not. <laughs> we didn't even get to attack. Oh man, our God, four we are quests. We are failing. But we're almost at a pack. One more well, win. Well, the problem is this green white angels deck is mostly green cards. All right. Let's see here. Are there some Planeswalkers to be released that you worry a bit about the power level of? I think, like, if we were worried about the power level of some of the Planeswalkers, we would have changed them back when we could change them. So I, so I would say no. There are some good ones, though. There are, there, we, have, we will always make good magic cards. <laughs> well, the set's sweet. Of course there yeah, are good yeah, yeah. ones. So if you want to know exactly what Planeswalkers Ooh. are in the set, if you go to our website, there's... Um, an article that was written by Chris Gleason, and it has like close-ups of all the stained glass Planeswalker art, and you can just like look at all the art and identify what are the Planeswalkers. It might even have the names of them, but I'm not totally sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep a flyer. Oh, that's the nice thing about this deck. You just have a bunch of random flyers to block their nonsense. Yep. Ooh, this feels like a Tempest Gin. Ooh, Ixalan's Binding on Tempest Gin? Oh, it's not a Tempest Gin. It's just a counterspell. Oh, well. Um, during Dom testing, were you considering nerfing Teferi? So that's an interesting question because, like, it implies that it was always as strong as it was. Like, it actually, <laughs> like, Teferi changed a lot over time, and it did get nerfed along the way. But, like, we wanted to position Teferi as just a strong Planeswalker that any control deck will have access to. Oh, there's a Tempest Gen with Dive Down Backup. But we got Big Lyra Dawnbringer. One mana can't counter it. Boom. Easy game. No Entrancing Melody. Exclusion Mage is generally a sideboard card. Merfolk Trickster doesn't do much to it. All right, we're looking good. Well, I guess Merfolk Trickster could trade Tempest Gin for the Lyra Dombringer. Can you confirm the Planeswalkers that we don't know the art? I'm not sure. Uh, like, we don't really know the lore very well either, so I like I don't want to get any wrong. Right, right. <laughs> but I think uh, most of them have just, if not all of them, have been identified. You can probably find the information on Reddit. Because, like, people, like, who are good at lore... If you know the lore, you know what the Planeswalkers are. Why would they tap it after tax? Like, for example, there's this guy... Uh, what is he doing? Oh, he's going to... Trade. He, oh, my guy, oh, my, my creature Trish. lost okay. all text. Got it. So here's an interesting thing, right? My, th my creature's going to die. I'm thinking of killing the Trickster and using Ixalan's Binding on Tempest Jin. Oh, yeah, he has no way to... They have no way to bounce it. Yeah, sure, because we don't want him right? to play any other Tempest Gins, and, and he's tapped out. Yeah, right. it's, it's pretty weird, but it makes sense. Right. Um, yeah, so anyway, about the, the Planeswalker thing. So one character uh, that 
is in the set is Davriel. And when I saw him, I didn't even know who he was. Like, I was like, what, this dude that someone made up? No, it turns out he's just a character and he's like in the newest novel. But when we were like making all these planeswalkers, there were all these names that I had never even heard of. Does R and D get involved with arena design? Um, hmm, how do I answer that? Like, we don't really get it. involved with arena design, but we do have input, and and we do like so we get feedback on cards from the arena or the Magic Online team in case like a card is hard to implement in digital, uh, or if there's like a better way we can word a card to make it easier for digital. All right, Resplendent Angel, do your thing. It becomes a spy five. So it would trade with Terramander. Oh, but then the Resplendent Angel would be off the board, right? Yeah. Uh, well, how, how much does it cost for him to adapt that? Five, but he's got three. Our opponent's got four creatures in the yard. So I probably just fire this off. Sure. Yeah. Why isn't Garrick on the list? <laughs> there is a story reason why he's not on the list. Both I don't three. I don't exactly know the reason why. Um, Mark Rosewater does mention Garrick in his article from today. So Boom, booster pack, should we open it? Sure. Alright. Maybe there's a rare wild card inside. Or a mythic one. We need a mythic one. Yeah. Boom! No. Or I own so many Ravnic Allegiance cards that it's always mirror match. Well, like, I just at some point, at some point, you're not gonna have. Mirror now match, it must right? be four. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like every pack I've opened the last like couple packs has been mirror match, right. or like the biogenic, uh, the enchantment where you draw cards, the green thing. It's always Guardian like, Project. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. one. Yeah. Although I draft that one a good amount, because that card's actually good. This one is. Th that that was a really fun, uh, interesting card to test. I will say we had it at different points in the curve and. Ultimately, we settled on, hey, if this is just like, if this is just like way too cheap, it just makes standard a lot less fun. The infinite mirror thing or whatever. Oh, sure. It's <laughs> like, imagine you play that like turn two or something or, or whatever. And then like. It's a very high variance card. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hey, look, this is like the turn two history banalia. Yeah. We got the turn two resplendent angel. Nice. Wow. It's almost yeah. like the turn the, two The history. beats just never stop. Yeah. One I, of the I best MTG. There's, there's a lot of beats in here. You know, unreal. One of the best MTG players ever. Also, who's the guy in the camera? <laughs> it's just the disrespect, you know? It's just, it's just, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, to, I don't even know. I'm too rattled. I'm too um, rattled. Would you Jaylight or Angel? I'd probably Angel because I feel like the Angel will just be able to attack. Also, this gives us the and upside of Resplendent Angel into Shalai into... It's sure. Lyra. Yeah, and like Jade Light could just get stronger later if you draw a Wild Growth Walker or something. Um, all, all great points. Ooh. What prompted the change from put the rest on the bottom in any order to put the rest on the bottom in a random order? Uh, so we changed that because um, any more than like putting three cards on the bottom, it takes too long to resolve, especially in digital. So like if you have to like reorder five or more cards, you're kind of just sitting there thinking about the order forever. And let's be honest, the order is not very relevant most of the time. So, uh, so random order was just a way to speed things up. And if you notice, like some cards still say any order. Like usually, if it's like a couple of cards, like three or less, like adventurous impulse, for example, puts them. You choose the order. But if there's like any more than that number of cards, Ooh. it'll be a random order. Hey, we're pl they're playing as a token deck. They're going to tribunal us this turn too. I just, it just totally feels oh, like no. a tribunal. Oh no! Oh, oh no! The locks it on. This I can handle. Wait, aren't they just... Wait, so on. imagine if, like, Bloodbraid Elf nine, or Living End, nine, like, 12. if Cascade put them on in any order, you would just be reordering, like, 30 cards. Right. What is happening here? Uh, I don't want to see this anymore. Yeah, that seems like a pretty big threat. Here. I was just making oh, sure we didn't an have angel. lethal. Nice. Yeah, I was just making sure we didn't have lethal. We have twelve. Like we could have used Ixalan's binding to get the Loxodon, but we'd be one short, so might as well just. 
Oh, we have so many flyers. We do. How does our opponent live? I don't know. I mean, we couldn't beat a flyer with our token deck, so I can't see how our opponent wins. Unbreakable formation attack? What? Pay two? Oh, are we dead? No, oh, he's we're gonna not. Gain we're, a at 30, we're at 31. So this goes here. Then we'll just... And maybe the elf block's a big thing? Yeah. We're, aren't we gaining... Wait, doesn't this trigger every end step? Uh, yes, we will get... Um, Don't we get another angel? We will get one, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, we were, our opponent was uh, dead anyway. Nice. Oh, we could have blocked the five... Wait, do those angels have first strike? No, no, no. Yeah, they do. Wait. No, I don't think no, so. No, no, no. Just plus one, plus one lifelink. Yep. Yeah. Wow, we are we are killing it. We are it. so close. We are killing it with this angel's all deck. the quests. I'd like to thank uh, BBD for innovating this deck. Yeah. Green, white angels, get it done. Yeah. Former world champion. Yeah. Strong magic player. Turns out. This uh, deck is just so consistent. Is dismissed too strong for standard? I believe it is too strong for standard. What about Cryptic Command? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if like blue was the worst what about, and the mana was what just What about God Rewind? Awful. Uh, rewind is like probably about at the line. Like Rewind is a card where if someone had it in their set and it was about to enter FFL, I would be okay with it and just play test it and see how it does. Don't chain whirl me, bro. Good thing I didn't play the second elf. <laughs> Oh no, a Chain Whirler. Hey, didn't we build this deck to beat Mono Red? Now we're getting kind of owned. Graveyard? Yeah, well... Graveyard? We... yeah... Well, they did kill, like, mm -hmm. both our Land War Elves. Yeah, also, Land War Elf is not usually the card you want to draw against Mono right, Red, right, 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 right. just dies. You just want Wild Growth Walker. Oh, is this Wizard's Lightning too? Okay. Just Mono Red things, no big deal. If I go land, land... Okay, well, 3 4 is. You know. Can't, couldn't play the Land War Elf because we were just dead on board. Okay, well, we're, we're in trouble, folks. I'm going to block a Chain Whirler and hope for the mm. best. <laughs> Not looking good. No, we just have no way to win. Like, we would just need to gain life here. And okay. we can't. Okay. Are we under the development? Yeah, we're in R&D, right? I, I don't know what the question means. I don't know. Are we on development? We are in, I don't know, what is that, yeah. We are designers, if that's what you're asking. Our official title is game designer. Or yeah. play designer? Game designer? Game designer. Game designer. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Shows how much I know about my job description. <laughs> Um, do you think Skewer was still a good idea after the resurgence of Mono Red? Um, I think, uh, Skewer is not a problem w Ooh, in Mono Red. I think it's cool. more of a problem with, like, Best of One. Because, like, aggro decks are just going to be stronger in Best of One. Uh, okay. So, I, yeah, I think it's more of a Best of One problem. Like, I think Mono Red is, like, totally healthy in, like, a competitive Best of Three environment. I considered trying to adventurous impulse for forest. I see. That's very <laughs> risky. It's oh, a little bit look greedy. At this deck. Oh, is this the acquisition deck? This has to be the acquisition deck. No, no, I think Chroma the acquisition deck. Oh no, is Lich's Mastery. Difference. This is the Lich's yeah. Mastery deck, right? Uh, sometimes they play Lich's Mastery, but like I've also seen versions like that are just it's just a mono black control deck that just plays like weird stuff. Why does it play Chromatic Lantern? Because it plays other colors. Oh. Yeah, so it's just mono black and it... This is probably bad for a green-white strategy. I think strategy. it plays Hydroid Crisis. This is probably very bad for a green-white strategy. Five color mono black. Ooh! Hmm. Is that worth it? I don't know. Uh, maybe. Do we want to you know, kill the treasure map? You know, I don't know if it's worth it. Like... Or do we just play two branch walkers? Treasure map does represent three cards. And a mana source. Yeah, maybe we are supposed to kill it. It's really hard to say. I'm gonna do it because my heart tells me to do it. Yeah, then you I totally do it. and this is totally like, this seems like the thing that Twitch chat would would tell me to do, which is usually like the most impulsive, like thing, 
that has like high risk, high reward. So I'm gonna go for it, team. Right? Well, our opponent has a lot of mana sources. See, look at that. That's, that was good for us. Yeah, that it was. Definitely. July or the double branch walker? Double branch walker? I think double branch walker. Don't do it, Paul. Show restraint. Ooh, I'm gonna keep that card. It has to be good. <laughs> I don't know if it's good. <laughs> uh, right. Actually, our, I want Our lands. opponent can't remove it. Do we? Well, want... they're they're all the colors. What what can we excellence? But I don't even. Oh yeah, maybe our opponent does have a way to remove it because they are all the colors. You're right. They can probably masterminds for whatever they have wait. That, that can doesn't do Lich's mastery is doesn't it have hexproof? Yeah. Hold excellent for crisis. We're not going to beat a Krasis. Our opponent has two Cabal Strongholds in play with all these lands. All right. There's just no way we're going to beat a Krasis. We need to, like, hit a bunch of lands and use our mana sinks. They can remove it with a Zakama Cabal does later. nothing with three swamps. Aren't these swamps? Oh, never mind. I thought these counted these as swamps. Why not bind a lantern? It doesn't get all of them in play. It's not Detention Mage. Yeah, if they had one Lantern, I'd consider it. If they it had like, one Lantern, yeah. Not with three. This is not Detention Mage. Does every? I feel like everybody thinks this is Detention Mage based on the comments. Why not b bind the Lanterns? Can I ask our... I wish I could just ask my opponent, like, what did you get? You know? You can't do that. There's no chat. I know. Bind our swamps. Bind our opponent's deck. Can we bind their deck? You can no longer cast spells. Okay, so now they have man. Ah. That's really good against us. I'm going to go with... That does kill a lot of things. They have one card in hand, though. That's Maybe that's what they got with the masterminds. I, I'm pretty sure that's what they got. Just bind the opponent. Yeah, I would love to if that was a thing. It's okay. This angel's gonna go all the way! Nope, okay. nope, nope. And now we can play both of our spells next turn. Mm. And the land. Yeah, we want to play the land. We don't want to hit land off of this. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. We're losing a land now. Do we have any sweet things that they can get back? I don't know, but I'm just... I'm in tap out attack mode. Uh, our graveyard, we have a Shalai. Okay, at least there's no uh, Baneslayer. There is no Baneslayer. Our opponent has Shalai and they can activate it. So that's, s how much mana is this? They have four swamps, Does this, this doesn't net the mana, right? Uh, they have six swamps, so th yes. This isn't a swamp. No, they have six swamps. Oh, they have six. Wait, what the? Why did I miscount the number of swamps in play? Because anyway. it looked like f the animation said four swamps, but it had a little Oh, no, our opponent's playing it. the thing in their hand. I was really hoping that they just activate. Oh, no! no! Why was it crisis? Why was it crisis? It had to be Oh, but jellyfish! Crisis. And we can't even target it now. Now we're dead. Maybe our opponent attacks us. And then we Maybe. lose after. That's a big oof. I will say, you know, probably the green-white mid-range deck is bad against the janky, dirtle, mono-black deck. All right, you know what? I've seen enough. It's okay. Attack with the angel was... I did attack with the angel. All right, we still need to attack with 35, 45 creatures. Okay, we're so close. We're so close. All right, the other deck that we have, by the way, is the Merfolk deck. But again, keep the questions flowing. If you still have questions with regards to all the RNA stuff, any comments about uh, standard, maybe? Oof. Oh. Uh, that's unfortunate. Yeah. But we can't answer questions that are specifically about arena design. Arena design or war cards or Modern Horizons cards. So, uh, Frostrider111, I don't know the answer to your question. I'm sorry. All right. 
I wonder, I think I'm supposed to just adventurous impulse for a green source. Well, we do need to... Uh, yeah, they probably are just going to... They're just going to kill They have yeah. onboard way to kill our elf anyway. Yeah, yep. So I really want to make sure I play one of these on turn three. So now we can... We haven't played Atlanta. We can just get Forest and play Lanor Elf, I guess. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, that seems fine. Super right. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> blink twice if counterspells in Modern Horizons. <laughs> oh, no. What do we do? <laughs> I can't not blink. Oh, confirmed! Like... Yeah. Like, blinking is, like, involuntary, so we're going to eventually just blink, and then they, they're not going to know what it means. It could mean anything. Never get the attack with the Fanatical Firebrand when there's Lenore Elf in play. Um, What's up um, with Street Riot? Well, what is up with Street Riot? What? What, what's Street Riot? What's your, is that the plus one, plus oh trample thing? It's a GRN card, I'm not sure. So I play Jaylight Ranger because our opponent has had Wizards Lightning up with Gitu Lava Runner. Um, or even Shock. So I want to give my opponent the opportunity to like maybe tap out. So that you know there's a higher chance that my Jaylight Ranger doesn't die to a Shock effect. Ooh, our opponent's playing Light up the stage here. They just played Lightning Strike. Huh. Alright, so Street Riot is like a pretty weak enchantment. Um, so is the question like, why is it so weak or? Woo! I would like to keep that one. Thank you. Nice. Yeah, um, my guess is it was meant to be like a build around for like a token deck. Uh, like maybe like a way to, uh, bring together like Selesnya and Boros. But it didn't work. I think it was just too weak. Probably should have been four mana. Yeah, I yeah. I don't think that card was yeah meant to be especially strong. Ooh, we're all we're getting close to our ten wins. Mm -hmm. Um, how did rampaging Ferocidon come about through development, and will there be any way to bring it back in standard somehow? Uh, so. Rampaging Ferocidon was uh, made to be an answer against uh, Sahili combo uh, because at the time we weren't sure if it was if uh, the combo was going to be banned or not, so we wanted to put a a safeguard into the set. Mm -hmm. that, yeah, I would say. Like, that, that kind of, I mean, it kind of like uh, when you look at cards like Sun Cleanser, where you're like, yeah. we made the card mm -hmm. be because at the time. We weren't a hundred percent sure whether or not we were going to make any decisions with regards to bans for the team or energy deck. Right. Yep. So uh, then, um, before it was an Exelon, right? Yeah, I think it was. Before Exelon came out, we did end up banning Sahili combo, and then we just had this card that was just pushing out so many other strategies in standard, like any light gain, any token strategy. Um, we also knew that we were putting like a Bane Slayer variant. In Dominaria, and we knew that like the Frost Sun is going to just shut that down as well. So like it was just, it wasn't like meeting its original goal because, like, it was for this combo that didn't even exist anymore, and it was just doing too much like bad for the format. So that's why it was banned. Mm, Esper Control is a really bad matchup. <laughs> what do we? I think we just have to hope they don't have a wrath. Like, yeah, that's really I, the I, only... I think this just. Is the deck's worst matchup, which yeah, yeah. you know you're gonna face it sometimes. Cards are usually not unbanned from standard. I don't think there's ever been a standard unbanning that I remember. You said this is not good, right? I don't think it's good. Like they play Mortify. Yeah. Okay. So the only target is like either um, Search for Azkanta or Teferi, right? Right. No wrath. Well, they played all tap lands, so there's a decent chance. That they won't hmm. wrath at least until next turn. Now I don't want to add anything. No, yeah, we else can't play anything here. But good beats. And we don't have the best follow up either, unfortunately. <laughs> right. <laughs> Paul, how are Kyle and Jake? Kyle are, and Jake are fantastic. They are playing with each other a lot more, so you know, a uh, li little bit less stress. You know, there. Uh, Jake is at that point where he's just kind of following Jake around. And doing everything, or trying to do everything that he does. Yeah, 
I'll keep a jade light. Kyle and Jake are my children. My boys. Oh, to fairy. It's a good one. <clears throat> do you think MTG has a deficiency with Planeswalker interactions? What do you think, Paul? Um, I mean, I think we tried to... That might have been true before, but we really tried to address that. Um, I'm gonna... Yeah, um, we tried to make sure there are answers. Like, red has attacking, for example. Like, white but, has oblivion ring effects. But also, just even starting from GRN, I think we just tried to make our removal a little bit stronger. So you will just see a lot more powerful removal effects, right? Like, we have Bedevil... Right, uh, we have the trophy. There's just a lot more. Yep. Th there's like a few more options if you actually want that, yeah. you know, want to deal um, with those things. Vraska's contempt, I think, does a lot of good for standard. Um, so, like, you can probably expect a card of that power level in most standards, mm -hmm. and other answers too. Like, I don't think it should only be Vraska's contempt. There should be a variety of different answers. Five more creatures. Hey, Paul. Hey, Melissa. Huge fan. You are both great on coverage. Thank you. Thank you, Nikolai Bolas. I haven't done coverage in forever, <laughs> but I would yeah. again if I was given the opportunity. Right. But yeah, I, I, have, I, I might not be given the opportunity. I have again. the Invitational in uh, two weeks. I will be part of that team. I don't know if they've announced the um, the coverage squad. This has happened multiple times. Oh, right. man, uh, that sucks. Yeah. But, uh, but yes, I will be doing coverage. Yeah, um, so Canadian Bacons, that's a good point. Yeah, we are trying to just, like, add more answers for Planeswalkers on just random cards like Thrash Threat. Yep. Which is, like, yep. we were trying to make a shot at, like, what does a Gruel Planeswalker removal spell look like? So we, we made Thrash Threat. It doesn't see as a ton of play, but yep. we expected the card to see yeah, more Yeah, I mean, the thing is, oftentimes when we make a bunch of cards and we're like, all right, there's some chance that this might hit, and sometimes not all the cards end up hitting, but, you know, we just make a bunch of cards for all of you to decide... What happens, right? I mean, uh, you know, we made the Crawl Harpooner. Didn't really, really see a whole lot of play early on, but now it's like a staple. You absolutely have to have it in yeah. your main or sideboard. Yeah, we were just talking about um, Legion's Cali Landing, actually. Like, right. when Legion's Landing came out in Ixalan, it didn't see a ton of play. Right. And then as time went on, yeah, yeah I was always like, of play. I was like, man, this card just looks really good to me. Why is nobody playing it? Did we just get this wrong? No way we got this wrong, because, like, this just does everything. Yeah. I mean, I talked to Marcio... I was like, what is the best card in the White Weenie deck? And you people go history or... Or, or Benelish Marshall. Or Marshall. And he was just like, no, it's actually Legion's Landing. Because he's like, it's a creature, it's 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 ramp, you know, it's a mana sink. It just kind of does it all. Definitely, yeah. And that was like why we made that card. Um, but another reason why I didn't see play early on is because like it was Ixalan. That was during the time when Standard was like in a pretty like broken and unhealthy state. So cards that we expected to see play didn't just because of like... Just how broken Kaladesh Block was. Yeah, I mean, part of that was just, uh, you know, like, oftentimes what you'll see, um, especially, like, for mid-range strategies, is ultimately one mid-range strategy ends up being the most powerful thing to do, so it has the best rate creatures. I think currently, like, there's a lot of ways to build decks, but, you know, a lot of people are leading on Sultai mid-range, for example. But you can still do a lot of stuff. W when you had access to kind of that energy package with the super efficient creatures, like... There was not a whole lot of reason to play other creature strategies. Um, and, you know, uh, with that in mind, we've really tried to kind of keep it so that there's a lot more balance between all the different strategies. Um, you know, it was a little bit easier because we had the guilds to help navigate us. But I think uh, I think we got to a pretty good spot because it looks like almost every guild is represented in, uh, in, in our standard metagame right now, which is really cool. Um, our opponents tapped out. I'm going to play this big flyer. That sounds great. All right. He's a pretty medium flyer, but still bigger than their stuff. It's not as big as the Tempest Gin, but it blocks all mm -hmm. the other stuff. Uh, ever since joining the R&D team, how is experience leading to now and how you guys feel you guys impact to development? I will say that in terms of the cards that actually get printed, we have a huge impact, um, especially in, like for all the, the competitive stuff. You know, like... 
you know, maybe we don't come with all the up, with all the endearing like cool, flavorful designs. But you know, if if you're talking about like solid, powerful, functional, you know, things to do in every guild, like we spend a lot of time on that. And uh, I think I'm personally feeling a lot of that um, currently because I kind of got in when we started working on GRN, and to see that they've been received pretty well so far, it's a really good feeling to know that the work that our team put into kind of help creating standard uh, has paid off. So I, I am I am extremely proud of what me and just our team has been able to accomplish so far, and hopefully we can keep that going. All right. I am going to play a magic card. Yep, I am going to do that. What are your thoughts on Faithless Looting in Modern? Do you feel it's too powerful or is it in a good spot right now? Um, so I think Faithless Looting is a, like our most talked about Modern card right now. Uh, but like, as you guys saw in the uh, BNR list, like we didn't make any changes to Modern this time because like we just made a change to Modern and we didn't. We would just want to like let the format settle down for now before like taking any other action. And we didn't really see a reason to make any Modern bans this time around. Yeah. I I mean, I, I know a lot of people are talking about like the the archetypes that that card uh, that Faithless Living helps you know create. Like you know you have the Dredge deck and, and the Phoenix deck. But I think also oftentimes Modern is often self correcting too, where people will make adjustments and things that seem super strong now because people aren't necessarily as well prepared to play against it. Um, you know, oftentimes people make adjustments. That's not to say that we're never going to make a change. But it's more like it hasn't shown us enough to the point that we were willing to just uh, kind of pull the trigger on the ban. But, you know, that might change. If the Mythic Championship in London is just, you know, all Phoenix decks and Fe uh, Phoenix and Dredge decks or whatever, and Faithless Looting is like a huge, huge problem, then we might, you know, look to revisit that, so... This is where I wish like Ian, Ian Duke was sitting here and he just gave us like a script to say. It's like, okay. Yeah. Because he's the one who writes all of our ban, and, uh, our, our ban list uh, articles. Yep. Yeah. When I was writing play design articles, I had to just like talk to Ian all the time. Like, Ian, can I say <laughs> this? Or like, Ian, what was the reason for this? And like, right. Ian explains things just so well. Yeah, of he course. He should be writing He's very articles. eloquent. Yes. He does write some yeah. of the articles. Do you, know how to fa do you now have to factor best of one when designing cards? Yes. Yes, we do, for we sure. Do, we do now. Arena sure. is definitely a big part of our future, and so we have kept that in mind, and definitely discussions have shifted where we now do, of course, consider um, Arena, uh, sorry, best of one um, for, for design. And, you know, so, some of that even, you know, you can even see some of that in, in Ravnica Block too, right? Like, you know, l look at these, like, cards that are better in Game 1 scenarios like the Harpooner and Night of Autumn, just stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, Guilds of Ravnica is when we first started thinking about best of one, but right. not necessarily like designing for it. But right, like, right, right. but we just we knew that it was going to be a thing, but we just didn't really like. We didn't know at the time uh, would Arena like take off as as well as it did. But we did make some cards for best of one, like Crawl Harpooner, one that we've been talking about, is a good example. Do you still hang out? Hey, Paul, do you still hang out with LSV and some of the CFP guys? I mean. We all live in very different cities. Um, I will say that when I go to the Mythic Championships, I do try to, you know, have a dinner with with Luis and maybe some of the other uh, Channel Fireball guys. All right, what what do you want to do here with the Knight of Autumn? Are we just oh, four great three? Question. Uh... Oh, I probably got a lot of Terramanders. Okay, it's five mana to choose. Okay. Where are Why we? Why not pump a chill? I can pump oh, at I any see. time. Uh, opponent dive down. That's fine. I think I just do want to play. Do we play, play something things. here, or do we pump with Shalai here? I think playing something and then pumping next turn is better. Like this turn, we get to play two big creatures. That makes and sense. Try to race. Yep. Um, more questions. What's the most broken first draft of a card you've ever play tested, or are you not allowed to talk about that? Um, so like. What we usually do when a set is first about to enter our standard is like we just do a pass of all the cards and just like look for things that we just know are just going to be broken and we will like make changes to those cards right away. But 
after that's all done, then we start playtesting and we find like lots of broken things. I can't really give specifics. I don't know any offhand that are interesting to talk about, but like the first couple days that, that we're playtesting the set for the first time, it's pretty crazy. Oh yeah, it's always wild. It's like fun, but also not fun in the sense that like you build a bunch of these crazy decks and then you play against somebody who's just playing a card that's clearly way too good. And then they just play it a couple games. You're like, okay, this is not fun. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see. So they can they can pump this Terramander. So the only creature I can actually attack with is the Knight of Autumn, I believe. But then our opponent can not block, pump this, and then we and block here. Us. Five, six, seven, eight. No, so they don't have lethal because we can chump the Shalai with... Yep. something else so I think I'm attacking with just Knight of Autumn passing pumping oh because Knight of yeah. Autumn is the only one that can trade that can go up to five power right yep. and I'm okay with that so if my opponent wants to spend the mana to trade I'm okay with that so I don't need to do anything here okay now I need to do something here um hey Dime Hoarder we don't work on Arena, so we don't have answers to your questions about Arena. Um, we don't know what's going to happen with uh, cards that rotate out yet. Curious Obsession. Okay. All right, we have this Bronted on. This is, this is super close. I mean, this Miscloaked Herald is, an, is a big unblockable creature. You know what would be nice? A Lyra Dombrunner. Let's go. That's an Angel. That is an angel. Wow, this game is tough. This game is hard. This game is very hard. Um, I definitely want to play this. Don't counter it, friend. We cannot attack. Looks like we're not dead. We're not dead. We did it. We're not dead. We're going to probably have to sacrifice this Brontodon to kill the Curious Obsession, which will then buy us time to race. Um, let's see. What was the first set you worked on after joining R&D? Paul? Uh, I would say it was like towards the tail end of M19, but I think really like where I started from kind of the beginning of FFL stuff was GRN, I would say. Yep. Yeah. Um, That's kind of where I felt play design was like, yeah. like full power. Yeah, know? yeah, during yeah. GRN for sure. Right. Uh, when I started here, I was um, on the development team, which was like very different from play design, but the first set that I uh, worked on was Oath of the Gatewatch. And then I left for a while mm. and came back We're super dead. during Ixalan. We have to jump block both. We're super dead. Do you play test non standard sets like Modern Horizon? Um, so personally we didn't play test Modern Horizons, but we did have like a team of play design working on Modern Horizons. Uh, we for the most part just test standard sets, but like we do uh Sometimes we do also play test other sets like Commander or just like other products like, you know, like in the conspiracy space, like we'll do like play test for them. Sometimes we're even on teams for them, but, but like for specifically Modern Horizons, uh, we didn't work on them except for some, some of the draft <laughs> format. Yeah. How do you balance sealed and draft? I mean, I think while we do practice some sealed, we do focus primarily on draft because you learn a, most of the same things there, right? You just, you get a good gauge for power level, but also draft is where you actually get to see more of like kind of the cohesive strategies between a lot of the themes. Whereas in sealed deck, oftentimes it's just like a pile of your best cards and you don't actually get to see like, you know, if this mechanic works exactly how, uh, as intended. 
Um, but you know, uh, we we will put some consideration to the seal deck as well for sure. Hero of Precinct One. Oh, this old favorite. It's like white darbies. I know white darby kind of made this popular. Yep. Did you guys design the lockets as a response to how everyone hated clue stones and dragon's maze? I would not say that it was a direct response to that, but like whenever we do a Ravnica set, it's like the third time, but like it's only the third time, but like so far we tried to like do repeats of cycles. Like we did the guild mages three times, for example. Um, we did the clue stone like clue stone like things three times. There's always like some kind of mana fixing land. This time we just reprinted gates, but you know, it, like we're always like doing new takes on the cycles. So we knew we wanted to have some kind of cycle like the clue stones to help make uh, make it so you draft multiple colors. And I think overall, like if I were to redo the lockets again, I would make them maybe a little different. Like maybe like make them two and then two colored mana to activate instead of all hybrid. Cause like in the end, uh, Players are not playing them as much as we played them when we were playtesting them. Uh, but the goal for them was to like just give players a way to draft more than just guilds. Like draft three or four colors. I've heard WotC has an internal pre-release for all employees. Does any department take these very seriously? I don't think so. I don't know. It's meant to be kind of fun and casual. Yeah, it's super casual. I think most of the building... Uh, plays either super casually or just not very much at all. Like like the people who you like hear about all the time like R and D and people like on in like on the community teams like Trick and Blake and people like that, like they Lord play Fi. lots of magic. Well maybe they're responding. But know. there's a lot of people in the building who just don't play a lot of magic and for them it like they just go and they just, you know, play their matches and you know, they they're probably not very good players or anything. Yes. But, like, it's not in any way competitive. Yeah. There's definitely, you know, you're going to have a big gap in terms of, like, you know, magic skill, I guess, uh, between all the different, you know, uh, places in the building, which makes a lot of sense, right? You know, it's like I wouldn't expect somebody from, you know, like the marketing team to have spent every hour growing up playing competitive magic. Whereas, you know, a lot of people on the third floor have spent a lot of time thinking and playing about playing magic. One pre-release a few years ago, I actually uh, did the, the teaching, learn to play. Mm -hmm. And I did teach people how to play, and they were mostly like either like programmers, digital people. But like people who are directly involved in Magic, like our customer support staff, for example, they're mm -hmm. very enfranchised Magic players because they just have to know Magic really well right. to be able to help customers on the phones. I imagine Mark Gottlieb would be out for blood at the pre-release. That doesn't sound like Mark. That doesn't Gottlieb sound like at Mark all. at all. Which Mark? <laughs> I mean, Mark used to play competitively, right? I don't know. I'm not sure. Well, we're, we're, when we, we're time. done streaming, we're gonna I'll go ask, ask him. I'll ask. He does not. You know, yeah. When you say Mark Gottlieb, I don't. I don't think you know cutthroat competitive Magic <laughs> players. So. <laughs> If I were to say who is out for the most blood at pre-releases, I would say that it's like the people who do more of the like community management stuff. Okay. Like, like Trick and like sure. Blake Rasmussen and like those people. Right. So if they're watching right now. <laughs> <laughs> this does not do a whole lot. Oh wait. Ooh. So I could kill the Thopter and then kill Dovin. Or I can just make an... I think making an angel has got to be better. I'll be honest. I don't really know what's going on too much in this game. Making an angel has got to be but better. But making an angel... Like, if we oh, make wait, an why angel I, every turn... It that, get that sounds great here. Yeah. I think making an angel is just better than playing a Knight of Autumn. Yeah, yeah, yeah I get it. I would have been able to kill Dovin, but now I just have an angel in play. So, yeah. Yeah, I do see the argument now that I'm actually looking at it <laughs> uh, for the Knight of Autumn because like you could have just killed the Doan straight up. Right, right, right. But just like now, now our opponent has to deal with like both of our angels. He was I played against Mark once back in two thousand. Okay, well that was a long time ago, nineteen years ago. So. Uh. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. So 
So we're going to have to ask him about that oh, yeah. release or that event at Gen Con yeah. 19 years I, ago. I heard, you, yeah, no holds bar, unsanctioned event at Gen Con. What just happened? Did uh, you guys have any input on Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica, the D&D product? Um, no, we didn't. Um, the Magic R&D people who worked on that were, um, well, I know that one of them was James Wyatt, one of our writers who also used to work on D&D. Um, he had a big hand in making that product. Um, I am personally not a D&D player. I played like back when I was in high school for a little bit, but I liked Magic more, so I just like more focused on that and stopped playing D&D. How about you, Paul? Have you played D&D? No. No, I have not. I was... Uh... When I was in college, there was a group of kids who played, but uh, I wasn't cool enough to play. So I, uh, I, I was, because they were like the senior kids, and uh, so I just watched. It looked like a lot of fun, though. And then I never got into it myself. All right. Yeah, I'm trying to remember, what did I play first, D&D or Magic? I think I played Magic first, but I think I, I played them both, like, roughly around the same time. Right. I mean, I got into Magic, like, so I really didn't play a lot of D&D. Like, that was what took most of my time. I played a lot of Magic. I had set up a lot of drafts at the at my school. Um, and then on top of that, like, I played a lot of Magic Online. That was, like, all my hours. Just just setting up real-life drafts over in school and then also just playing a ton of Magic Online. Hmm. Yeah. Wow, our opponent has a lot of tokens in play. Okay, I'm going to concede now. Yeah, that's a bit too many tokens. I like the deck opponents playing a lot. Yeah, it's it's super value. -y. All right, so now we're gonna shift gears. We have we have fulfilled all of Melissa's quests. Oh great, let's play Merfolk now. We got Merfolk now, yeah. so let's let's go ahead and uh, do I log um, out? Log out. All right, I'm gonna push a button and see okay. what happens. Oh, okay, boom. It, it's us now. Okay, yeah, now yeah. we're just gonna like do things that you guys can't <laughs> see, like you know, put in passwords and stuff, you know. Yeah. So password is magic is great one to no. Uh. <laughs> Are you part of changes like London Mulligan and such? Um, yeah. So uh, like pretty much like all of R and D has input in any big change like that. But like as play design, we uh, we like heavily play tested the London Mulligan. Yep. We used to call it the new Mulligan. The new Mulligan, <laughs> and it's been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah, so. I, I think it's like great for standard and limited. Like just like just. It's such a feel-good mulligan. Like, yeah, for sure. Like, mulliganing to 6 and 5, currently, in, in competitive, it just, like, feels really bad. But, like, with the London mulligan, you get to keep far more hands. Even if you have to mulligan to 5, you know, like, being able to, like, sculpt a 5-card hand out of 7, like, it just, like, leads to more real games of magic, and just, you just feel much better about the game. Yeah. I don't know how many of these is correct. Because you do have to take, like take a turn off to do the thing, but it's only one mana, so it's kind of weird. Um, I did add a couple of spell pierces, um, so that's why I shaved one. Okay, so th is this this is probably a take on the Raphael Levy list? Yeah, yeah, it's just plus two spell pierce, okay. minus one deep root, and minus one of this. I don't sure. want to cut any more. Yeah. I don't want to cut good. any of the creatures, but also spell pierce when like the great thing about like if people just don't expect it, that's how you really get them. Like. If everybody just thinks I'm just playing Raph's list and then like I spell pierce like a wrath and my opponent was like, nice. You know? <laughs> Can you tell us a bit about how the mul mulligan played out in older formats? Uh, so we don't know. That's why we're doing this test in London. Oh wait, no! I did not mean to uh, uh -oh. I did not mean to join the ranked queue with this. I because this was meant to be a, oh, a more no, fun no, thing. Oh no, you're just gonna win. Well look, no, I'm, no, I'm, you're fine. I'm well, I'm two oh two, I hope I win. <laughs> um, so for the London Mulligan, um, about the older formats, it was most of a theory craft. But like the reason why we chose uh, Magic uh, Mythic Championship London to test it is because it is a modern uh, tournament, and we just like want to get the most data from the Mulligan at this tournament, so we just know how it plays out in modern, like in real life. Hey, the spell pierce might be useful. Boom! Look at that. Two two and two one ones. Powerful. Hey Paul, do people still say Paul, Paul, Paul d to you? Um, not so much in real life, but uh, whenever I do coverage, yes, I get that. I get that a lot. 
All right, so land would be good. Don't thought erasure me. No, the surprise is gone. <laughs> and they're going to probably take it, too. The spell pierce? Yeah. Or, or like... Well, deeper waters I is also see, pretty good. Yeah, like, it, it really depends on their hand, because they can right. maybe play around spell pierce, but if their hand does not allow them to play around spell pierce... It's hard if they they're, like, if they're that. curving into wrath, right? How many hours a day did I play to get mythic? Not a lot, actually. Uh, once you hit mythic, it resets you down to plat, like plat four. So once you reset to plat four, like... You know, also I ran super hot. Like, I think I had, like, like an 80% win rate on White Weenie or something. So, it took maybe, like, a few hours. Like, five, six, five to six hours, maybe? To go from bronze all the way, that, that's a long journey for sure. Because you have to climb up through silver and then gold and then plat. When I got reset, I ended up being silver, I think. All right, I'm going to attack here. I'm not going to loot because if my opponent plays a Wrath, I want to be able to play a Trickster post-Wrath. Yep, get the threat out there. And our opponent firing off the Mortify there on the Waters turn 3 tells me that there's a really good chance that they have a Wrath right now. Oh, they play Revitalize too? Jeez. Okay, so they didn't have it. Um, I don't want to add another creature to the board. I think I'm just going to adapt. Look at that slimy water. Is this Simic water? I don't even... It is Simic Look. water. Simic water. Ooh, moment of craving. When Ravnica Allegiance first came out, I adapted something, and then mm -hmm. my opponent like killed the creature in response or did something to it. I don't know. Mm -hmm. And I had the adapt animation like forever for the rest of the game. Ooh, <laughs> it was see. Just, the adapt animation was just hanging out on the screen. Right. Yeah, White Wainy has been quite strong for me. Even after Cyber against this control decks, you're like, creature, creature, creature. Sometimes you just flip Legion's Landing and you can't lose. And other times you just, like, play creatures and then have a Spell Pierce or Negate for their Wrath and, and you can still beat them that way. Is there anything from previous sets that have influenced the decision to put 36 Planeswalkers in the new set? Um, I'm not really sure. That's more of a Mark Rosewater question. What, what just happened? Our opponent just... What? Structural things like that get decided like way before we get our hands on the set. All right, I am. I am gonna just try to find a lord here. Ooh, Kumina. No, I'm gonna. I'm gonna look. Here, here we go. We're gonna try to get big here. Find the lord. We did not <sighs> find the lord. <sighs> okay. Um, I mean, I don't think they have a wrath because they would have cast it already. What does the ultimate do? Deal damage target player with it. No. I can just get Silver Gill Adept. Right. Jade Bear to loot on Beth. No. I'm just going to. I'm not going to. I'm going to choose to ignore Kaya. And I don't think they have a Wrath, so. Ooh. Ooh, that was so good. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> that was a good one. That was a good one to hit. Not going to lie. Wow. I hope they have a shock land in hand. No. No. They had to play the Wrath last turn. They knew most of our hand. That's why we play the spell pure folks. I was tired of losing the sweepers. <laughs> when you are playtesting, do you personally try to draft every archetype, or do you have different people tend to draft a particular style? Well, that definitely happens, right? Yeah, I it's think just it's a pretty good mix, though. Right, and people's, like, just card evaluations, like, there are certain players who like draft... For example, Adam Prosak loves drafting blue decks, but that's not to say he won't draft other decks, but he likes the, the whole, like, spells thing, you know? Um, but... Uh, I do, like, if, I if I've drafted a set a few times, I do try to, like, if it's close between two different archetypes, I try to lean towards the archetype I haven't drafted yet. Yeah, I pretty much do the same thing. Like, if it's the first time I've drafted, I usually just, like, draft whatever's open. But if I know the set pretty well, I usually just try and do something weird. Like, 
first pick a weird build around and see if I can make that work. Yep. And we have some people who prefer aggro. We have to get a lot of elo here. We just beat the 77th ranked player. Look at oh. that. How, Plus wait, 50. Wait, how do you know? Oh, oh you're, you are mythic. Got I it. am mythic. Okay. I am not really paying Boom. too much attention to that. Hold on. Let me, uh, wait. Let, oh, I should reroll this. Right? That's the play? Oh, it didn't do anything. Yeah, that's what you're supposed to do, yep. Um, so I just wanted to play a Q. Wait. Traditional constructed? Can I do that? Yeah. Yeah, this one. You just don't want to do rank? Yeah, okay, this makes sense. Oh, so oh this is with a sideboard. Sideboards. Yeah, that's fine, too. Do you have a sideboard? Yeah, well, people want to see best of one, probably. It's just more... I don't know. Do you guys want to see best of one or, or best of three? You know? I can do either. All right, it's going to be like 50-50. Okay, well, no, best of three. So far, best of three is winning. Best of three is winning. Okay, let's, let's do best of three. Can I? Uh, all right. I'm locked in now, folks. So, so you did build a sideboard. Oh. Do you have a sideboard? I think so. Oh man, <laughs> what if you? What if you don't? Have, can you cancel like right now? No, it's, it's too, too late? late. Did oh, I build no. a sideboard? Oh no. I don't remember. All right, we'll find well, out. Like if you like just imported the deck, it might have had a sideboard. You know what? We'll find out. Oh, after game what one. if there's no sideboard? We'll find out no. after game one. Oh, this is awkward. This Do I keep? Not, uh, I don't know. Uh, we're first? I can see keeping if we're first. All right, fine. Who needs sideboards anyways? Right. Like, this I deck mean, is a tribal deck. Like, it, it depends. You know? Do we have a sideboard? If not, yeah. maybe we just keep the hand and just hope, Look, see our opponent mulligan. hope to win. <laughs> if our opponent just mulligans to oblivion, we have a chance. One thing that's really awkward about that, like, I know Jade Bear is a one drop, but you re just really don't want to play turn one. Can't target itself. Mm -hmm. But, but I do it'll have be two a mana. Two to the following turn, at least. Yeah, I'd really just love a biomancer. Oh, see. Oh, great. See, easy game. Although next turn we're probably just adapting to try to hit lands. Mm -hmm. Luckily, we can't play in turn one. <laughs> Ooh, this is probably not a good matchup. Some kind of Drake deck. Oh yeah, probably not. Or it's like a. It could be like a, a, a bolus deck. J Jade Bearer would be insane if it targeted. It'd be too good. Yeah, it would just be it a would literally, two, two It would literally go in every green deck. <laughs> like, it would just be the strongest one drop if it could target itself. Yep. Like, we would... I think if that card could target itself, it would just be an 0-1. Right. It'd, it'd be pretty lame, I think. Sure, 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 yeah. I agree. We should not just make Isamaru at Uncommon. <laughs> Although, I guess I'm literally staring at an Isamaru, but... Hey, you have to jump through a hoop to make that That's fair, Isamaru. right, yeah. Can't just make Kumena Speaker and Jade Bear. Oh, shock. Okay. Not sure it would be that insane. Uh, no, it would be pretty insane. It would just be the strongest one drop in standard. Right. Ooh, our opponent's killing all the things. But that's where this card shines. Yeah, like... Well, wait, 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 wait. Oh, no, we, I'm just going to put oh, deeper Oh, yeah, we waters. just want the deeper waters here. Yeah. That's more insane. There we go. We're about to kind of kind of go off here. Yeah, we're just gonna make all the creatures. And it looks like our opponent is playing a Drake deck, not a Nickel Bolas deck. Yeah. So we probably don't have to worry about any mass removal or anything. Wow, well, we're kind of doing it here. <laughs> Can you reveal the same card twice? I think so. I don't, I mean, I don't know you couldn't. You definitely Invifor can. Invifor Ritual of Sith. Okay, so they definitely, they're repping some shock action over here. All right. So I can play Kumena and try to go wide. What do you think about that? Uh, well, like Drake, deck, Drake decks don't play mass removal. So going wide, right. I think, is just good. Yeah. Alternatively, I can play 
Deep Root Elite and Jade Bearer and get in decent attacks this turn. But their opponent plays Steam Vents untapped, which makes me... Oh, probably Dive Down or that, Spell that could, Pierce. It could be Dive Down. So do you think Kumena and just pumping the team is the way to go? Yeah, I mean, you're getting a Merfolk out of it, too. Yeah, I mean, I could go Deep Root Elite, too. And then this... Eh, yeah, I'll go, I'll go Yeah, I, I think okay. I like this. And our opponent might shock something in response now. Nope. Let's see. So there's also the greedy line of tapping 33 things to draw a card to try to find an untapped land to play Jade Bear. Oh, that's really greedy. Okay, I'll, oh, I wow. Won't, I won't that do that. That is really greedy. <laughs> but, but imagine if you get it, though. <laughs> what if it's an island? How bad would you feel? That would feel pretty bad. The thing is, I don't have that many turns to actually use my Kumena because my opponent has a big Crackling Drake. Like, they can turn the corner really fast. Yeah, how do we, like... Stop, like, let's say this thing becomes a nine and then we're just on a two-turn clock. How do we even stop that? Well, so what we can do next turn, so this turn we'll go put a counter on all our things. If we go J-Bear, J-Bear, if we draw a land, we can go J-Bear, J-Bear, Silver Gale, or whatever, and then actually pump the rest of our team again. Yep. So that's pretty good. Yeah, we might just win next turn. I'm just going to do it. Just do it now so you don't forget. And then we can have six. Mm -hmm. Look at all these big. Our opponent might might beacon bolt our Kumena. Mm -hmm. That would make sense. Three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I mean, we have, yeah, we got a lot of damage coming. F six value. You gotta appreciate the F six value. Come on. Land. There. I mean, that thing's getting beacon bolted, right? It has to be a beacon bolt. I think they have to beacon bolt. Unless they're just like going to try and set up a lethal a turn by with turn. a Drake. Yeah. Yeah, but we're very close to a kill here too. If we draw a land, it's it'll be great. Ooh, okay. Alright, we need a land. Need a land here, folks. Oh, that might also do That's it. That's a good one. Um, all right, so let's see. If you play this, and then you play the Jade Bear, and then Pump Team, we would just have to like do the math to see if that's lethal. So but I imagine they block it our is. biggest creature here. Yep. Four, eight, plus nine. Yeah, and it would be 17. more than four too, because I'm pretty sure like you would play this and the Jade Bear. Right, right, right. And then I'll just pump. And that's uh, just four more creatures on the battlefield. Then you would just tap one to pump the team again, which you probably don't even have to do. Bacon Bolt. So they take four, eight, nine, twelve. Yeah, I, I think I counted 18. I'm pretty sure they're four, dead. Four, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, I think I counted just exactly 18. Because they can only block a four power creature. And four, eight, twelve, eighteen, yeah. L look at this. This is like extremely wide. Do you it, see this board? It went. This deck it's went so eight and wide. two at the Mythic Championship. Like the, the deck. Well, Jason itself. Chung did not win a match though, <laughs> or something. But this is the list that J this was Jason Chung's deck. Mm -hmm. He took this to like apparently from like bronze to Mythic in like two days or something. Okay. So people have bad days at at the pro. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I should have maybe left one. Th I had lethal. I could have left one thing back to, to pump everything again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. So what? Well, how do I sideboard here? Is it? Do I want her? You have a sideboard. I do. Great job. Oh yeah, crushing canopy for sure. I'm assuming harpooner. Although I need a creature in my graveyard before I can start killing drakes, but that's super likely to happen. I think. Yeah, they have shock. Yeah. Um, like, do, I do want... you want something like a spell pierce? This is or probably too expensive, right? Yeah, I, I wouldn't play that. I already have two spell pierce main, but like, what am I cutting here? Uh, maybe the incubation incongruity, because that's just like maybe this card that turns drakes into O fours for a bit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We are boarding in a bunch of. Yeah. Okay. I can see cutting that. Yeah, because like in my mind, incubation, like yeah, it finds the right thing, but most of the time, it's just like your next creature costs one more mana. Yeah. Jason had like a good sideboard guide, but mm -hmm. I don't have it on me right now. Trickster is good. Oh, because we can block their flyers? Trickster does seem good to me. Okay. 
Maybe deeper elite isn't great because it, uh, it's a big I, setup cost. So like, if you just always assume your creature will die, what is the worst creature? Probably deep root elite. Right, and we also just added four crawl harpooners, minus jade bearer. I could also see that. Deep root water is very was medium. super good for us that game, but like. Well, don't I? Don't like, they have cannonade? Don't I want something for cannonade? Oh sure, maybe deep root waters is not what you want. Because they just have cannonades. Maybe I want. Maybe we have to add three. I don't think Spell Pierce is terrible. Like, I like keeping that in as a two of. <laughs> so are we supposed to keep Incubation? I don't know. Incubation doesn't seem great. Like, I'd rather have Burfolk Trickster. Because, like, on one hand, like, the, incub the second half of the card can kill a guy. And the first half can, like, theoretically find you something, but, like, it only finds a creature. I think we have to mulligan. Yeah. If we draw an yeah. island, though, this hand is no, so No, I good. think you just have to mulligan. Ugh. Well, I'm keeping well, this one Yeah, you gotta sure. keep that one. Mountain? They can't have anything turn one. Just, oh. just keeping up shock. What is your design philosophy in differentiating power down planeswalkers from something like sagas? If they're functionally similar, well, doesn't that take cool anything. space away from sagas? Um, so the thing that no. differentiates sagas from planeswalkers is like sagas is like an event that's just like telling a story, and planeswalkers is like a person. Um, but they are like pretty functionally similar. <laughs> <laughs> but like we would just rely on on story to just like make them feel different. There's no way they have spell pierce. Okay, yeah. I didn't really see too much about what happened. Like, did you we miss, just well, I mean, just miss we miss a land drop, okay. but we spell pierce two of their things. Land would be super good. Any untapped land, I guess any land is untapped for us right now. Like, History of Benalia could have just been, like, white planeswalker that was, like, minus one, make a 2-2. Two -two. Sure, yeah. Uh, minus uh, some others make, you know, pump your team or whatever. Uh, but, but like, the, the whole story is, like, hey, this is the history of, like, these people in Benalia or whatever, you know, that, that just, like, like, the flavor just, like, added a lot to the card. Opponents sure taking the other big difference here. is you just have a lot more choices with planeswalkers. Come on. Okay, it's okay. We can just now spend the time to interact with all of you. I personally feel that RNA is the most enjoyable draft formats I've ever done. Do you think that guys will try to prioritize easy mana fixing? Um yeah, I mean, wh I think one of the reasons why RNA is so fun is because there's, like, so many different three-color combinations with the splashing, and there's, like, nifty, like, uncommon build-arounds as well. Um, oh, no. Yeah, like, more um, cards that, like, make you want to play three colors, and, like, if you compare that to Guilds of Ravnica, where we did try and make you want to play three colors, but I didn't think we were as successful there, because the color combinations were just a little bit more siloed, like... Selesnia says, play lots and lots of tokens. And uh, Boros wants you to just like attack and beat down. All right, maybe that was a bad example because those colors actually do work pretty well together. But like, is it is like, play a, a bunch of spells and attack really fast with things like uh, the jumpstart card that deals them two damage. And like, Demir is like, I am super full on control. So those color pairs didn't work so well together, even Come though they on! overlapped a color. Come on! So you're trying to just like triple block this thing? It's an 0-4. All right, let's try. Yes. So tricky. Punt. Did I punt? How Why? Did I punt? Where, how, where did I punt? This seems like a pretty, pretty, pretty decent thing to do here. I don't know. You know? This seems great. This seems pretty good. Just, just throwing it they out there. They can dive down. 
That, they could that, kill kill. They two, need to have two, two shots. Creatures. Dang. They did have two shocks. They did have two shocks. Okay. Okay. But now we have Crawl Harpooner. Yeah, That's but That's great. They have two big things. They have Cuz they have They have a big thing. Well, yeah, they will have a they big thing. They have a big thing, but we get to I, I think killing their Terramander here. Like I think we just have to kill their Terramander here. And try for the Merfolk tricks for next turn. Cuz like they're I'm sure they have enough things to adapt next turn and then yep. they'll just have two big things. Playing punt by not playing around double shock. Yeah, you know, sometimes you just can't play around everything. Were you guys aware of the Clear the Mind archetype? Well, there are people who drafted like the super slow, dirtily decks, and Clear the Mind was like a thing you could do, but, um, you know. Yeah, and, uh, it was. Like, and also Junk Troller was there for that yep, too. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. The blue deck has like lots of card draw because you have the Prying Eyes at common. Yeah, so Clear the Mind wasn't really a card that we said, hey, this is centered around an archetype. It was more like. Hey, sometimes blue white has a really hard time like winning games, and it's just too controlling. We need something to just like help it, you know, keep the deck going, and that's why clear the mind got added at common and junk troller at uncommon. So do I attack with the harpooner to make it less obvious? No, I can. I basically just not attack with anything. Well, they right? They have a beacon bolt and no cards. Yeah, I think I just attack with nothing. I mean, I could attack with the speaker. That makes it the least obvious, right? Yes, that, that makes it the least obvious, for sure. But then if they beacon bolt the harpooner, I'm kind of in trouble. Um, okay. Maybe you just attack with nothing, then. Just bluff it. Maybe I'm bluffing it. I just don't think I can afford to attack. Like, the, you know, I don't know. Yeah, I guess it, it, it does kind of telegraph it, you're right. I mean, whatever. If our opponent doesn't attack, we can just loot. Mm -hmm. I think thinking about it makes it obvious. Uh, sure. But maybe we like went up to get a snack or something. Yeah. <laughs> whenever, I don't pay too like, much attention to timing Whenever class. I'm playing arena and I'm just like, man, my opponent's thinking. They must have something. I'm always like, nah, they're just probably like, they just went to the bathroom. They didn't even beacon bolt. It's really weird. Crushing Canopy, or a Harpooner. Uh, I don't need the speaker. <sighs> this is super awkward. Can I take a turn off to take a million damage? <laughs> and play Kumena? Or do I still have to just pass? Um, I think you have to pass. So, uh, so I would. Here's what I would do, and then you can tell me if you agree. Pass. Then he, if he chooses not to attack, you just tap the guy anyway and just get in there. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then you can play Kumena. If Ascanta was reprinted, would it be reformatted to say "Surveil One <laughs> Threshold Transform Work. This"? Work! I doubt it. Like, threshold, like, Please that's... work. I think they drew dive down. I don't think but... we would just, like, add keywords oh, to things. Oh, it's happening. Oh, wow. It works. In Patience. that don't have that keyword. Patience. Like, opt was different because scry is evergreen. So you can just, like, write scry in anything in any set. But, you, but we wouldn't write, like... So if as Cantor were to get reprinted in, I don't know, some future, like, set or whatever. Like, some random commander set or something. Uh, it would be weird to just have this keyword. Maybe Commander was a bad example because Commander does have random keywords thrown in there. If it was in the, like a new main set, uh -oh. we wouldn't just have the keyword in there if it was the only thing that referenced that keyword. All right, so we're still in trouble. Still in a lot of trouble. I'm going to need to draw a card here. Because they played a Drake. And we done. I mean, they, they should just beacon bolt the Harpooner and try to kill us in two turns, I think. 
Mm -hmm. And try not to die. Yeah. Does this put counters on just Merfolk? Okay. Because putting a counter on this would be useful. Do I just chomp? I think I just chomp. Yeah, I think you just chomp. Yeah. Because like he has, so he has the onboard way to kill the Claw right, 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 next right. turn. Our opponent has to kill Kumena here, I think. They just want to draw cards. That's fair. Did we win the first game? Okay, yeah. We can still win the match. Yeah, the deck is just like all shocks. This deeper delete seems questionable. Well, we're not dead yet. <sighs> so if we go Kumina and then the speaker and put a counter on our team, do we win? We, it's 3, no. 6, 9, 12, 15. It's really close, though. Right. Um, we will get a loot, and we can uh, we can maybe draw into Crawl Harpooner or something. Or uh, our one of Crushing Canopy. Yep. Or Trickster. Is this game two or game three? Game two. Oh, okay. So this is that game where we miss land drops, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, a lord off the top would do it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, and we get the loot, so we have like two draws. They don't have any haste, so I'm just gonna main phase it. I think. Wait, what? If I hit a land, does that do anything? No, I don't need to main phase it. Or do you just attack with everything now? Don't put counters on any th anything, and just try and win next turn. Or is it too late for two, that? Two, four, six, eight. No, you didn't go to combat yet. So you can uh, you can no, attack I can for six. I correct? can only attack for six. So he goes to twelve, and the next turn two, four, six. That's not that's not uh, twelve. Hmm. Yeah, it would be yeah, you would six. Need to, yeah, yeah. You would need to top deck a lord. Yeah, I think we have a better chance of winning by putting a counter on all of our things, because it's only one less damage, right? Because if we attack for six this turn, whereas we put a counter on all, everything, that's five damage. Counter everything's five damage, and this would have been an attack for six. So it's only one point off. Um, and we get the loot. So we have a we have the Lord that we can potentially use to win the game. We have a Trickster. We only have one left, I think, two main, one sideboard. And then uh, Crushing Canopy and Crawl Harpooner are all cards. So I think we want to loot, because now we have two draw steps. Potentially even a third one. If we don't have lethal next turn, we can put counters on all of our stuff again um, to try to find a way to kill the Drake. Our opponent. One is merit to main phasing. Seriously thinking about, what one about this. One Yeah, one main phase of mer uh, one merit to main phasing the Kumena would be if our opponent drew fiery cannonade. Yep. We would have our squad be big. You Zach Nuffy, I'm not going to pretend to pronounce that, but you are correct. I don't think they have Cannonade, though. I think most people are playing Enchanting Melody now instead of Cannonade. Lava Coil. Oh, uh -oh. interesting. Wait, that's not... <laughs> This is interesting. They must they must have shock. Yeah, I guess. Right? Cannonade would be savage. So they, this is where they cannonade, and then Lava Coil kills our team. Well, yeah. I mean, if our opponent kills our team, we, we just lose. But, like, I, this is a very... Um, let's... Well, Silver Gill Adept gives us another draw. If we find a Merfolk, yeah. So no, now they finish our off our guy with shock, obviously. Has to be. Because, yep, okay. Because yep, okay. otherwise it would be just the weirdest play. Whew, okay, we need to find... Okay, land would be bad. All right. And, okay, okay, so that gives us... We have one more draw. So blue, and then here colorless. Right, because we don't have lethal off of this, right? 3, 6, 9, 12, 13 now. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right, Harpooner! Let's go! Yeah, we just need to draw Harpooner. Let's go! Like, Harpooner! The won't do it anymore. Oh, ah, so close! That was really close. Our opponent needed Lava Coil and Shock. Yeah, yeah. But we have game three. Yeah. Game three. Oof, that was a close game, that, though. That was super close. Deeper Delete sucks. I'm going to board it out. <laughs> I thought we boarded out some. No? No, we kept it all in. Okay. 
Um, uh, the waters might be better on the play. Maybe. Do you think we just want entrancing melody? How often do we have six lands? Or five. I mean, it, kills, it steals Terramander too. Yeah. I think I think it might be worth. Do they keep in their dive downs? Did you see? I don't think last so. Game? I didn't see any. Negate for they never even showed Cannonade. Negate is just solid anyway. Yeah. I'm not sure if it's better than Entrancing Melody. Entrancing Melody just seems like so hard to get it to work. It's just like I feel like we just. I think we might just need to maximize on answers to the flyers because we have so few ways to deal with them. But now, okay, so I, I like cutting this because we cut a bunch of creatures. Incongruity. Well, I don't really care. I don't want them to have a 3 3 in play either. I think this is mostly good only if you can, like, only for finding the Merfolk. Do you like Deep Root Waters or two Deep Root Elites or Spell Pierce number three? I don't think I like Spell Pierce number three. I'd rather have Negate number one than Spell Pierce number three. Once, well, they don't have a lot of creatures. Like, sleep is good when the ground gets mucked up. Like, Tempest Caller. But they only have, like, 12 creatures in their deck. Yeah, I would play Entrancing Melody over, uh, like, the Tempest Caller uh, if I were to, like, go that route. God, oh. why? This is why I, um, Jason Chung didn't win. Because, cause, like, the mana is, like, pretty inconsistent. You have all these, like... Yeah. Green one drops and, like, double blues and... Yeah, I mean, you do have enough turn ones with Unclaimed Territory. Um, our opponent's mulligan to five. All right, we'll see. Maybe this benthic biomancer. Oh yeah. Can get us back in the game if we draw land. Just land, please. Any land. I'll take any land. That was a that, really that was good a great one. Land. That was that, a really good land. That casts all your spells. I just play a 2 2 here? Yeah, I think you just play a 2 2. Like, your other option is like. Jade Bear is like strictly worse than, than playing Kamina Speaker here because then you just lose the ability to adapt. Right. And if you draw a land next turn, you could play one drop and adapt. Or just two one drops, whatever. Yep. Whatever seems correct. Now you can just play two one drops. Great. And hopefully they don't have cannonade. <laughs> Look. They know? did mulligan to five and they have island to island. What do they do with their discovery cards? They That's, just kept them? Yeah. That's not a cannonade. Mm, no, it's not. <sighs> well, that just literally brick walls us. If you tap it, you get to attack. But then we don't have a... Yeah, I mean, I guess that's, you get that's to attack like super for aggro. Like seven, because you're probably also playing the Jade Ranger. Jade Bear, yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's better because then they can never really attack us back. Because like not attack. Uh, the alternative is. The alternative is just like. Playing tricks. I'm not gonna Jade Bear for loot. I can just loot later. I think you just like. You want to just beat can't down? Can't play around colonnade. Uh, not. Uh, yeah, yeah. it's the the pyroclasm. You just can't play around the pyro pyroclasm at this point. And I think like since they have this blocker, your only way to win is just be aggressive. So you're talking for three, six, seven, eight, three, six. Yeah. No, three, four, five, six, seven. Pirate clasm for the so win. So now they either have the pirate clasm and you lose. Or, like, they just can't tag and say go and... Pirate Clasm for the win! <laughs> Is this a pirate? No? Okay. Is Do we this have a any pirate? merfolk pirates in play? Are there merfolk pirates? Probably not. Oh, I don't yeah. think merfolk were pirates. Uh, yeah, fair Because, like, Ixalan didn't do, like, cross-breeding of their creature yeah, types. that's fair. Totally fair. So even if they block this, two, three, four, five, six... Like, we can just, we can just tag with everything. Lord is like a lord is 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 game. It looks like our opponent is, maybe has like a shock or something. Mhm, mm maybe. 
Oh, okay, okay. Just a beacon bolt. Great. So now they block this. Lord. And they, Ooh. They take... We can just jade bear the Kumena speaker. You could, and then if you attack with everything, um, they would just have to block this and take one, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, so if I jade bear the Kumena speaker, four, five, six, seven, eight, and they like eat one, eat our Kumena speaker, is yep. that good? Um, one, two, three, four. I think it's okay. Okay. So this, and then just attack with everything? I think so. Yeah. So do you make the Benthic Biomancer bigger? Oh, yeah. And just throw the card away? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think you need to get in the damage. You're just doing the all-in thing here. I'm, I'm just pumping, yeah. Four, five, six, seven, eight, yeah. Because then they have, like, so many things that they need to answer. We have five creatures in play, and they're at one. Yep. Right? And it seems like they don't have the Pyroclasm. They don't have... They would have just they, played it. Yeah, they definitely don't oh, have it in hand. They're chumping. Hmm. Well, I'm still pumping. Mm-hmm. That's a weird block. How cute. It just like went over here yep. and then just immediately Straight to got the yard. Discarded. Not a May. Not a May. Well, now Pyroclasm doesn't even kill us. We just, we got a 4-4 four -four in play. Oh, yeah. How do they win now? I don't know. They can steal Jade Bearer. That doesn't, that's not enough. Yeah, like I think they should have just blocked the Kumina speaker because it, it still gives them the out of, of the Easy Pyroclasm. game. Look at this. We didn't even play any like payoffs. <laughs> we just played like, we played... Six one drops. Yeah, no, in we one just played game. all the one drops. All the one drops. Turns out one drops are just Look, like see? really good in magic. Merfolk, the new white weenie. That's it. You just curve out. Oh, it, oh, almost got there. Almost got there. How much? What time is it? It's three fifty one. Oof. Can't play best of three. That's for sure. All right, well, ranked. <laughs> okay, fine. You're fine. winning. It, it's not like you're not winning. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Play. Where do I find ranked? Uh oh, uh, you're in. Go? Oh, great question. Uh, okay, find match ranked. Oh, there we go. Okay. Okay, is this best of one? I think it is. All right. Oh, but I don't actually know. It didn't say. It didn't specify. I'm not sure. You miss me. I'm right here, Seraph. Every Monday, two to four Pacific, on this channel. How do you get a job at Wizards? There are a lot of different ways, actually. There are a well, lot of just, different ways. These, what do you do? Heads. Yeah. I uh, don't want that card. Ooh, we were playing against the actual Light Weenie deck. Um, let's, let's go ahead. Oh, but no, I should really answer first. the question about how to get a job at Wizards. Uh, we do have a lot of job openings on our website. Hold on, hold on, I gotta think here. Do I want the actual card or do I want to be able to go Deep Root Elite into Kumena Speaker? I'd love me a Silver Gill of Death though. What do you think? All right, so you're deciding to, uh, it looks like our hand is, has a lot of lands in it, so I think we just want a card. All right. I'm a sucker for cards that say draw a card on it, so. Yeah. Um, it seems like this is just a bad matchup, though. Like, their their deck is doing the same thing we're doing, but much just faster. much better. Um, so I don't want to play Deeper Delete right now, I don't think. Yeah, so, like, it seems like... Being if, able to draw sucks. So if we didn't know what our opponent was doing, like, let's say that our opponent just didn't do anything. Yeah. We would want to go deep root elite and then deep root waters and then start. Yeah, but we just die. Stuff. But we don't have time to do that. You know what? I think I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to do this and block the aspirant. Deeper waters could be good. Yeah, it's like our own legions landing. I mean, you know, honestly, th this is the big turn. If our opponent plays, you know, any of the three drops, we're in trouble. That's that's one of the three drops that would put us in trouble. All right, I'm gonna go deep root waters here, and hope it just gets back in All the right, game. All right, here we go. Our only hope, only hope. Hmm. Okay. More stuff. Oh, here comes a loxodon. Uh oh. This feels like a loxodon. Yeah, it does. 
Well, you know what? We didn't have a lot of time, so you know, I just wanted to lose about seventy rating points and then go to sleep. Oh, oh, it's a tribunal. So, wow. By the way, this is the reason why I play the White Weenie deck. It, it just gets these starts where every, every, like every other deck's like, why am I playing my slow, clunky, ridiculous deck when you can just curve out like this? This is just very consistent at what it does because you get to play a bunch of cheap, great creatures, and then you get to play cards like Tribunal plus Loxodon, and then your three drops are also fantastic. So, we're dead. So, like, the argument for playing Merfolk is you get to play, like, more disruptive stuff. Yeah. But you could also argue that the White Weenie deck, if you just splash blue, you just get to play all that disruptive stuff in the sideboard, or, you know, you can play a main deck if you want. Yeah, so the list that I've been playing is basically just Marcio's deck, like... It, it's it's almost the exact same. Yeah. I've just been playing Detention yeah, Mage. Yeah, this is pretty disruptive. You have Detention yeah. Mage and Conclave Tribunal, and on right. the sideboard you just have a million counter spells. And yep. the Tide Taker is like right. pretty disruptive against yeah, yeah. like Esper decks. Definitely. So uh, like yeah, this used to I used to play the Baffling Ends that Marcio played, but I kept playing against a bunch of like Wilderness Reclamation decks and stuff. So I was just like uh, can't afford to have too many deck cards. Also, Esper Control is really popular right now, and Baffling End does actual nothing. I mean, not yeah. not to say that the beauty of det detention is better, but it's more relevant card than baffling end, uh, and oh, it's really nice against growth chamber guardian. <laughs> also, anytime you just get two things with this, it's I mean, it's like detention sphere, right? It's the same thing, but uh, yeah. Currently, I have this. I can see four tribunal, one deputy, but for the most part, this deck has been just super solid. Really, really think this is just you know just one of the best decks in the format. Like, yeah, it just gets these draws where, you know, you're just kind of keeping on par. And then Loxodon is just like free Verderous Gear Hulk is the way I look at it. You literally spend no mana and you just get this Verderous Gear Hulk. Like, wow. it just gives you so much power free and toughness. Free Verderous Gear Hulk. Is that, is that a good card? Is, no, th I mean, okay, m maybe it's like a one or two mana Verderous Gear Hulk. But oftentimes, anytime you draw your one drop with the Convoke card, you're like one drop, one drop. They're basically, you're basically free rolling those cards because you're going to play this Loxodon afterwards. So... That is a pretty good, it's a fair yeah. comparison. Yeah. Uh, Elfstog says hello to the male streamer. Oh, yeah. Male streamer here <laughs> talking, uh, <laughs> just having a good time. All right. Well, I think we're about to wrap up the stream. Yeah, it, yeah. It's, it's about that time. It's about that time. We had all of our quests, so, you know, there's no reason oh, for yeah, us to... Oh, yeah, we totally accomplished the day. We all did our quests. <laughs> like, we even won some games. Yeah, yeah. It was pretty successful. We did, we did some We won some games, and we, we got to show you some decks. You know, we're getting kind of to the point where... We're, we're trying to come up with some sweeter decks to show all of you because, you know, I think we've seen the Azorius Aggro decks, the Sultai Midrange, the Tempo. So, you know, we we spent our own hard-earned <laughs> uh, cards to try to give you give you some entertainment. I think the Merfolk deck is pretty cool. Uh, the problem, I think, the only issue I have with this is it takes a little bit of time to get rolling. Uh, so just, like, it, it's kind of in, the, in a kind of an awkward spot. But I think it's, like pretty reasonable against decks like Soul Time Midrange. So if you think you're in a in a metagame where there's a lot of Soul Time Midrange, the fact that you have like, you know, just bigger creatures often with all your anthem effects and then like some counter magic, I think this deck plays pretty well against those. Mardu Hero next week. I actually have most pretty much all that deck. I was playing it for a while and then yeah. started losing with it, deleted it. I can't yeah, build can, any more decks because I, totally I built a Merfolk week. deck. All right, next week I'll supply all the decks then. All right, next week, all Melissa, right. lock it in. Marty She'll have Hero, some sweet decks. We're going to play some Judith. It's going to be sweet. I can, I mean, I have. I can buy 20 boosters and uh, see what I get. But yeah. All right. All right. Are so, we rating anyone? Uh, yes. We are going to be rating someone. Electric. Electric. Okay, we're going to be rating Electric. And again, I want to thank all of you for watching, providing us with awesome content, uh, uh, questions, and... Uh, We'll be back at it next week. I think it's going to be S2 again. Yeah, I think so. Uh, and then the week after, that will be the Invitational. So, I so it'll will be not me be and someone else. Right. Maybe Donald Smith, maybe Andrew Brown, we'll see. But maybe. me and someone. Yeah, it'll be Melissa hosting with somebody else. But until then, we will see you all next week. Bye.